This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. All right, so in this demo now, we want to look at adding custom features that you might have developed for uh, whether it's web parts, whether it's a, um, you know, some sort of other binary files, assemblies that you want to get into the SharePoint environment. Uh, now, this would be very specific to your developers, and there are development courses that you can take to really learn the details and nuts and bolts of that. But you as the administrator need to be able to upload those new custom features into your SharePoint environment. So the process is as follows. If we go ahead and browse our computer and take a look at the program files, and we're going to the root directory, which if we remember was in the program files, common files, Microsoft shared, web server extensions 14. In here are all of the sort of core files for SharePoint um, that are necessary. And where we're looking is in the template folder. Let's go ahead and open that up and you'll find a folder called features. So inside of there are going to be a lot of the SharePoint features and you just see a, just a ton of them in here. Okay, now if you pick one of these and open it up, you'll find a feature.xml file or just an XML file. Let's go ahead and pick a different one. Here's a dashboard, feature.xml, and there's some other XML files related to it. Uh, some of these may have um, many XML files, but they should all have a feature.xml file. Okay, and then some of them even have some subfiles. The feature.xml file has all of the instructions necessary to SharePoint. So what you would have to do once they've created their custom code, part of their custom code will have a feature.xml file, and it'll have the descriptions um, and in the proper format. So once your developers have given you that, you need to copy that into this features directory. Give it its own folder and have the feature.xml file be in there. The next thing to do would be to run the PowerShell command list we showed you, where we're adding features, right? And all you really do is point to that folder location where the feature.xml file can be found, and you add it, okay? So now we've added it into the SharePoint environment. So you copy it, you run the PowerShell command, and now what you'd have to do is go into your central administration, and if you look over under system settings, you'll see manage farm features. And if we click on there, we'll see a list of them by name and description. This is the kind of information that you would find inside of that feature.xml file, the name and description, right? And you'll notice all of these are active, but after you ran that PowerShell commandlet, you would see one in here that is not active. And the button next to it would be to activate. And so you would need to activate it for the farm. Okay, so that's a way... Now, it's not even going to show up in here until you run that PowerShell commandlet to add it into the SharePoint environment. But just because you ran the PowerShell commandlet doesn't mean that it has been activated, right? So we come in here and we activate it. Now, let's take a look at our team site. And we can go under Site Actions, go to Site Settings. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we should find uh, Site Collection Features. Click on that and you'll notice a very similar kind of environment where we've got uh, a listing of the names of the features that are available and within this site, do we want to activate them or not? So if I wanted to activate the publishing approval workflow, I could click activate. Now why are these not active in here? Um, I mean, these were just default settings, right? I didn't make any changes. I just chose that I wanted a team site when I created the site. Well, that's actually why some of them are active and some of them are not. If I had chose a publishing site when I created the site, there would be slightly different ones active in here, right? If I had chosen a blogging site, slightly different features active. It's really a question of which uh, web parts and which workflows do we want to make available as a part of a site theme, right? And not really the theme so much as this site uh, template. 
So when I went in and created the site and chose a template, not only is it sort of the look and feel and the layout of the page when I first create it, it's also which features are active. Doesn't mean after you create your site you can't come in here and activate some of these components. You can. Um, but anyway, those are the two places you activate them. So copy it to the root directory in the uh, features folder. Uh, essentially install it into SharePoint by running the PowerShell commandlet and then activate it for the farm and then activate it in any site that you want it to be a part of. Now if you were to upload a solution file, the solution file would contain a several features but would also include a template so that when you go in and create a new site, you can choose that solution to create the site and it would include activating certain new and custom features along with other features that are built into SharePoint. 